what is 5 p.m. now? So we are waiting for people to join us. Uh, Miss McCann says that she's been trying to join, and I don't see. Which other meeting? Uh, oh, from from the. Probably. Yes, Ms. Mahas. Good morning, Ms. Mahas. Hello, how are you guys? I'm going to see if I can quickly send out the link. Um, to people are having difficulty joining. The is here. I'm very happy to see that she has she has uh, gotten the group of the school. Um, Mr. Gar says, maybe, would you be able to pull uh, up Aspen and see what, um, well, let me see. I think Mr. Rueda Ahmad did email me. Oh no, she called, she texted me. She said she was going to join. Um, I'm going to go on Aspen just to get her email address. Ms. Woods is in. Good afternoon, Ms. Woods. If we're waiting around for the rest of the LSC members. I think they didn't. They're probably using an old link instead of their most recent invite. Ruth is in. Morning, Ms. Ruth. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> Ms. McCann is in. Good afternoon, Ms. McCann. Senor San Gabriel, buenas tardes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Israel Flores just texted me. He said he's joining shortly. <laughs> Um, I sent everybody an updated invite to the meeting, so maybe that's 
was the hole that people were probably trying to use the previous link. I'm not sure. Is the flower system? Miss Ahmad just texted me. She said she went to the YouTube link, but I told her to use the link um, that was emailed to her. So she'll be joining us shortly. We have nine in. I will also share my screen to share the agenda. So I will begin recording and chairperson Mary McCann Sanchez, whenever you are ready, um, I don't know if Mr. Maybe Mr. Flores, because when, once I begin to share my screen, I'm not going to be able to see anything. I don't know if, uh, Israel, if you want to take a look at the list of people that are on the call right now. Um, there are a few uh, school-level administrators on the call, and um, but you can probably remember our LSC members' names. If you want to help uh, Chairperson Mary McCann Sanchez, um, to see who is on the call, but I will begin to share. So far we have um, nine people from the local school council. Uh, let me just take a look at who's missing. So I believe we're missing uh, Rowida. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Hamad, uh, Lawanda Jones, and Santa Mon Montoya. Those are the people that are missing, uh, but we have nine people present. Ms. Rowida Hamad just joined. Hello, everybody. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. I think we have quorum, Mr. Escamilla, Ms. Makan. So, Chairperson Mary McCann Sanchez, you can call the meeting to order if you can hear me. Ms. McCann, I think your microphone is off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we, um, good evening, all. We've established quorum. Um, we will begin the meeting. It's 5.09 p.m. Um, the first point would be to approve the um, agenda. Um, which is a short agenda. We have new business of approving and amending the principal um, position advertisement, um, having a, some time for public participation. Would someone like to make a motion to approve um, this agenda, or is there a suggestion for amending the agenda? I, I motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. 
Ms. Malta has has um, moved to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Asensio. Mr. Asensio has seconded. So, uh, and thank you, Mr. Escamilla, for um, posting the agenda, sharing it so that we can all see. Um, the next point is um, to approve or amend the principal position ad advertisement. Um, we were all sent this advertisement last um, last week. Um, and so it's our opportunity now to discuss it. Um, and maybe we, perhaps we want to look at it in sections. Um, Point of order, Ms. McCann. Um, uh, make sure, let's make sure that the, the announcement that you have at hand is the one that was shared by, by Ms. Mahas, which is the most accurate um, edition of it. Uh, the one that I sent out was inaccurate, and I apologize for that. I didn't realize that Ms. Mahas and I stayed for three hours working on it uh, after we saw the, the previous one. So she has sent out a a more updated version i think it was in last week if i'm not mistaken wednesday last week so if you can uh, make sure that that's the one that you guys have at hand that's the one that we're working it's the one that uh, was sent by, by Ms. Mahas. okay thank you very much for that um so just a point of order um if we could just uh take go back to uh the approval of the agenda um, I don't believe we voted for it. We just uh, motioned and second the motion. Uh, so we could oh. go ahead and uh, put it up for a vote. So I could just have all the names of people. Yeah, thank you. I apologize for that. So all in favor, either say aye or post your name in the chat, please. Okay, the motion has passed with uh, 10 votes. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Yeah, okay, so having passed that agenda, um, now we can move on to new business. Um, and Mr. Asensio mentioned that we all need to make sure that the agenda that we have opened is the most recent one that was sent by um, Ms. Malhas and um, And I would um, appreciate your feedback if if you would like to look at this in sections. Would that be helpful? Um, it's a three, you know, it's more than three page document. And also, um, just a question: Was this document sent also in Spanish? As far as I know, no. Okay. Um, we need to translate that into Spanish. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'd you... also just like to note that um, the advertisement was reviewed at PPLC last week, and we made adjustments based on their feedback as well. So that's in the latest version. Yeah, could um, I think it might be helpful for us if it, uh, if there's any specific adjustments that you want to point out that we should be aware of that would be helpful to the group in um, making a decision? Ms. Malhaus or Mr. Asensio, I can stop sharing my screen. And if you'd like to share the screen with the uh, advertisement is fine. I joined by phone, so I won't be able to do that. Um, Mr. Asensio, is it possible for you to do so? I'm searching for it right now. Give me one moment. Hmm. Working on it. 
Let's change five. For some reason, it's not allowing me to to access my email. Hmm. I I I have I pulled it up. Um, I see. Um, I think if Malhas and Miss Mary McCann Sanchez are on it, that's the latest version, I believe. It's from last week. I think it was sent out on Wednesday or either Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again and you can let me know if this is the most up-to-date version, okay? All right. Do you see it? Yes. Yes, that's the most up-to-date one. Absolutely, I agree. So if you guide me as to what you wanna see, I can scroll through it and allow people to read or look at it. And you can tell me to pause when you'd like me to pause or I can also enlarge it. Okay, well, I would be happy to um, to read through it. I could I could um, interpret it and translate it verbally in Spanish so that Spanish speaking members can understand it. And then those who read English would be able to read it. Um, I suggest we go section by section and see if there's any comments. Um, so is is that agreeable to everyone? Yes. Okay. So let's start with the section that says la aplicación eh, de documentos requeridos para aplicantes. Eh, primer punto, un eh, currícula vita. Eh, segundo, tiene que tener eh, la carta de presentación, que debe ser tres a cuatro páginas máximo, que debe de, eh, expresar las eh, calificaciones, responsabilidades, eh, y las, los credenciales eh, que están en la lista que sigue, y tanto como estos temas. Eh, el interés del candidato y sus pensamientos en cultivar eh, el cuerpo de estudiantes con alta capacidad y la facultad eh, en un ambiente de excelencia académica, mientras que también mantiene el enfoque en la salud emocional y social y el desarrollo, eh, identificar y apoyar um, eh, los estudiantes eh, diversos y también los que están eh, con dificultades. El segundo punto, su compromiso a y sugerencias que tiene en cuanto a las políticas para equidad de oportunidad y los resultados en, en el ambiente de diverso eh, de la escuela pública y las políticas y estructuras que usted eh, implementaría para dar a los estudiantes, eh, a todos los estudiantes, la oportunidad de, de lograr su potencial académica y social plena. Y favor de ser tan específica como sea posible. El tercer punto es de discutir lo que sería su estilo gerencial, las técnicas de liderazgo, las estrategias de comunicación eh, que tendrá para coordinar las iniciativas en una forma, o sea, en un ambiente colaborativo y también para iniciar cambio positivo eh, con un, una comunidad de estudiantes y facultad eh, con alto eh, nivel de rendimiento. Entonces, so that's the first section, um, the three points that are included in the cover letter. Esos son los primeros tres puntos. Um, is there any comment or any um, amendment that we would make to the cover letter and the resume? You made an awesome job translating verbatim. 
<laughs> my accent comes out, but I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, so um, we can move on to school information then. El punto es, el, el segun, la segunda sección es sobre la información de la escuela o del colegio, eh, que dice que Edwin G. Forum College and Career Academy es un eh, colegio, un high school público de cuatro años que está ubicado en el vecindario de Belmont Cragen, um, en el lado noreste de la ciudad de Chicago. Eh, es una escuela, un colegio eh, diverso, diverso con eh, una población grande de, de personas que están aprendiendo el inglés. Um, Forman también eh, tiene una variedad de programas de honores de um, la ubicación avanzada eh, y clases que proveen el crédito, el crédito doble, um, tanto como tiene educación de carreras técnicas y cursos en ingeniería, pre-ingeniería y también en las artes. Eh, también tiene la eh, ROTC, y tiene programa para los medios sociales digitales. Y también que formen tiene una variedad de deportes, que tiene 12 equipos de deporte y va a continuar a crecer en los próximos años. Los estudiantes tienen una selección amplia um, que incluye fútbol para ambos sexos. Um, también tiene fútbol tipo soccer para um, varones para jóvenes y para niñas, mujeres. También tiene voleibol para um, hombres, para mujeres. Tiene softball para mujeres y béisbol para hombres. También tiene basquetbol para niñas y basquetbol también para, eh, para varones. Tiene boliche o bowling um, para ambos y también tiene, eh, no sé, es luchar, no sé, wrestling. Um, y también tiene un director eh, atlético que um, también está pensando en agregar lo que sería atletismo, track, natación y equipos de lacrosse. También Forman um, tiene relaciones de colaboración con BAM, un programa que se llama Becoming a Man, o, o sea, llegar a ser un hombre, After School Matters, um, y también el Museo Nacional de arte mexicana. Uh, y la misión de Formen um, es preparar a todos los estudiantes, incluyendo los estudiantes con discapacidades en aprendizaje postsecundario um, o para poder entrar en la fuerza de trabajo en estas áreas. Eh, o sea, por desarrollar competencia en, en estas áreas. Uno sería en estresas básicas, eh, la lectura, escritura, matemáticas, um, destrezas eh, de fundación, o sea, de, de, fundamental de aprender cómo aprender, um, destrezas de comunicación, de escuchar y expresarse verbalmente, um, destrezas aplicadas, tal como son el trabajo, Um, o el, la preparación para llegar a ser ciudadano, um, adaptabilidad de poder pensar creativamente y resolver problemas, um, eh, de ser efectivo en grupos, de desarrollar sus destrezas interpersonales, la negociación y trabajo de equipo. También uh, liderazgo, de poder contribuir a ser eh, un miembro efectivo de un equipo y ser un líder. Y también en cuanto al desarrollo personal o gerencia personal, su autoestima, su motivación, su capacidad de um, tener metas y actitud, de tener una orientación positiva hacia el aprendizaje. Um, So that was the description of Foreman and what Foreman wants to do. Um, I don't know, is there any comment from anyone in the group regarding that description? I think it's accurate. Um, 
from all the programs that we have had um, and the, the sport teams and how they have progressed in the last three years um, and continue to progress. Uh, the, the leadership of, uh, of the uh, athletic director and the collaboration of many faculty members assisting as uh, the athletic director is, is, uh, is in key, is key. Okay, thank you. So I, I wanted to ask, um, when Ms. Malhouse mentioned that, the, um, you know, that you all met with um, PPLC as planned, um, and you made some changes, Was are, does this section include some of those changes, like updates in terms of the school and um, the goals of the school? Indeed, um, indeed. So the mission statement itself, we did not make any changes to because that's our school's mission statement. Um, and we did we did make revisions to the programs that we're connected to. Okay. So, so there, was a, there was a removal of a program that we no longer have. We lost it this year, but uh, I'm sure that we will uh, establish a new alternative to that program in the future in the near future um so that is that was taken out of that uh mission statement okay any anyone was there anything that anyone would add to this section or does it read well to everyone Señor San Gabriel, ¿usted está de acuerdo con lo que se ha leído hasta ahora? Uh, yes. Okay. Sí. Okay, gracias. Okay, so then... Um, if there's no further comments, we could move on and look at the list um, that follows. This section is about the kind of candidate that we're seeking and the qualifications that the candidate has. So I will read it in Spanish. Eso se trata de lo que tiene que tener en cuanto a las calificaciones, o sea, las cualidades que debe traer el candidato. Um, el primer punto es que debe tener una pasión um, sincera para educar a los estudiantes en, en, para tener un desempeño alto en una comunidad diversa. Um, tiene que tener honestidad y transparencia en la toma de decisión y también uh, la comunicación debe ser clara y consistente. Debe tener eh, destrezas de comunicación excelentes, tanto lo verbal como escrito. Um, tiene que tener de, de poder um, eh, llevar a cabo ciertos programas y tener experiencia con estos programas. Uno sería eh, multi-tiered system support, o sea, un, es un programa de sistema, apoyo a sistemas que son de diferentes niveles, de poder um, también manejar lo que sería... Um, la enseñanza que um, da respuesta en una forma uh, apropiada culturalmente. Um, el social emotional learning sería el aprendizaje social y emocional y de tener prácticas um, que son equitativas. Otro punto es que um, tiene que tener la habilidad de um, relacionarse o hacer conex conexiones con estudiantes, con padres de familia con la facultad, eh, con el equipo de trabajo y con la comunidad y de ahí de hacer crecer eh, un ambiente de dignidad y respeto. Um, debe tener famili familiaridad eh, con comunicaciones eh, eh, que, que cruzan las diferentes culturas, um, experiencias en comunicación efectiva con personas que no hablan el inglés. También um, debe tener el deseo de promover un ambiente donde las diferencias se ven como fuerzas de, o como fuentes de fuerza 
y oportunidades para la colaboración. Um, también debe poder hacer incidencia o abogar efectivamente y continuamente a nivel público a favor de las necesidades de los estudiantes y para las diferentes personas involucradas eh, en la escuela. Y también tiene que poder um, tener una gerencia fiscal um, excelente y poder presupuestar. So let's just see, um, en este sentido, um, si estamos de acuerdo que estas son las, las eh, cualidades que queremos que, que tengan los candidatos. Um, is everyone in agreement that these are the characteristics, the qualifications that we are looking for? I, would, I have a suggestion, um, maybe saying something with experience with... Um, attracting and retaining students. I know that's something that we have talked about is growing the population of former students, retaining students. So we want to make sure that we, uh, that is also put in the uh, qualifications. We want to make sure that somebody who can bring ideas or has ideas already, um, that will be important for me too. Um, other suggestion is also the training development of talent. I believe in every school and every organization, um, employees sometimes just need more training and development to get their ideas, get their uh, leadership skills out. So somebody that has will be able to do that to not only faculty, but also for staff. And it could be for training development for different type of departments from the main office to uh, faculty. So that's... Um, another area to improve uh, employee morale. And I think it happens everywhere. So I'm not necessarily know exactly the morale um, situation at Foreman, but again, it's just more overall in any different institution. So something to say between those lines. I wonder, I wonder if that isn't covered already with the other points. Um, I, know, I know that one wants to have a more specific, uh, a specific uh, point uh, to discuss, uh, but wouldn't we entertain entertain ideas that even though they're not necessarily established in the qualifications, that that will arise as we interview the, the future candidates. Um, over the years, over the years, I've seen I've seen many people applying for, for the position of uh, principalship in schools. I've worked in two different schools for the, the last uh, 29 years. And I've seen how uh, in the interviews, in the, la the latter part of the interviews, uh, you not necessarily have to ask these questions, but the candidate actually brings it out uh, in the process of interviewing. And uh, that is something that will come naturally. So wouldn't that be uh, already expressed in the, in the previous description? Or do you want, do you guys consider, again, this is not only for Ms. Cruz, for everyone, do you guys consider that this should be specifically established in the qualifications? I don't think so. I, I think it should be upon each individual. So you are in agreement with what I'm saying, Ms. Woods? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Um, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is because uh, over the years, again, uh, I've seen how principals, once they get into their positions, they develop this rapport with the faculty and th this camaraderie with the faculty that that shows us how how an onion gets to be peeled layer by layer you know like every person in the world has different layers so once the person is in charge you see that developing occurring uh and and uh, it, it actually triggers more interest uh to see how that person interviews 
uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, I, I would love to see how the candidates would respond to questions. Again, questions that we would pose to the, the candidates uh, in the interviewing process. Yeah, I I tend to think that um, the the point about experience with attracting and retaining students is currently in public education is a very important um, quality, and although I know at the same time that there could be a candidate who has worked to that end and that all of the forces around us make it difficult to attract new students because there's other factors that go beyond what the principal can do to attract um, and retain students. But I, I would like to hear other opinions because I do think that that is one of as you know just the same way that a principal needs to work with a diverse community i think that it is related um and any other thoughts jumping on to your point i do think that it's it's tricky um looking at where wherever our candidates come from with attracting and maintaining a certain number of students um, and to look at that data because every neighborhood is different and all of mm -hmm. those other factors, like how many charter schools are in the area. Right. Um, so I think, I think that type of data would be difficult to actually examine and how connected it truly is to the candidate as opposed to the neighborhood that they're in. Okay. Good point. Anyone else like to make a comment? I mean, I can I can make a comment. One, I just feel like uh, it's a very um, awkward position to be in for myself um, while we're discussing this because um, um, we're talking about candidates. But I, I I understand, and I may be I don't want to interpret exactly what. And I believe that was because I was on a different screen, so I don't know who was who was speaking. I believe that was Miss Cruz, um, and so you can correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Cruz. Uh, but she but she was ex, uh, sharing like, well, perhaps adding something if the candidate has experience in attempting to recruit and retain students. And and although I agree with um, all of my colleagues and the members of the LSC's thoughts that they shared right now. I think there is a level of experience that one can potentially bring to the table. Uh, for ex example, um, identifying the need for clarity uh, within academic pathways, which is something that I immediately identified in coming into form and, and promoting a clarity of pathways for every single department at the school so that everyone in, in a respective department can speak knowledgeably of what a student would experience, for example, in a math in a math department from freshman year through senior year uh, and the classes that we offer. If a, if a principal does not have the experience to request that of their departments or their schools, they are learning that and they're building that experience. And so I think not having that experience, they're coming into a new school with, that, with a deficit of needing to identify that and, and then shape it. Um, and then also perhaps being able to identify the need of programs which is again something that I was able to do and we're, we're actively trying to expand our programs, expand partnerships with Wright College, expand programs through CTE. And again, I think someone would need to have that experience in order to be able to identify that, to put that in place. But this is just what I'm sharing and I don't wanna sort of sway anything because I know the point of this is trying to just put an advertisement out there to, uh, for the sake of recruiting potential candidates which again is, is awkward, which that's all I was gonna share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Skimmy. Yeah, that's what my point is. It's just, you know, I mean, doesn't mean they don't have it, you know, they're not gonna be considered, but having that extra point, that's fine. I think like you're all saying, you know, you're learning within the position, but I mean, a principal position, I mean, you do expect some level of 
experience um, coming in, especially if you want to see some changes within the um, high school, um, like whether it is, you know, attracting or retaining, where like Mr. Scamilla said, bringing into new programs, you want to make sure that you either keep, like for example, Mr. Scamilla or just overall somebody who can come in and hit the ground running, knowing what they're doing, some sort of experience, it's a plus um, because then you don't spend time somebody learning it and developing this two to three years on the road. You actually have somebody who knows how to do it and can implement it sooner. That's what my idea is. But I mean, I'm fine with what you all have. Um, you all work in the school, but again, sometimes asking some sort of a little of more than what we expect will be great. But again, that's just my um, input. And again, those are just my ideas. Mm -hmm. Anyone else like to comment? Yeah, I want to jump in and just, uh, I, I agree with uh, Ms. Booth Cruz. Uh, just because uh, when the whole in just putting that in the in the advertisement it just makes uh, the candidates aware of how to address that point uh, and be clear about it. I'm just thinking in the interview, there's a lot of points that are going to be brought up. I just want to make sure that point is not um, left behind. Just uh, trying to address all the other things. So um, I agree with Ms. Ruth Cruz. Thank you. Estamos, I, I'm going to translate, estamos viendo si debemos incluir otro punto o dos puntos. Uno sería um, que el candidato debe tener experiencia en atraer y o retener estudiantes. Y segundo, en experiencia en um, capacitación y desarrollo del talento de, del equipo de trabajo y la facultad. Uh, no sé si hay otro comentario de los que hablan español sobre, sobre estas eh, características, si se debe incluir también uno al otro. I must insist, and I think that um, it's important to have another window. I must insist that this type of, uh, of uh, points should be left for the interview process um less is more and when you do when you put less you have more fabric to cut from and uh, in the in the interview process you can discover the real candidates we only have to choose two for the final mm -hmm. and if 10 apply more than likely in my experience nine are not going to be a, a fit for our school in my opinion i think i think that 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 even though the idea is is, is a great idea we should we should let ourselves to have some room for exploration rather than announce because because when in the interview process any candidate will say what you want to hear. They are, they are, they are, they are coming prepared to, to be interviewed. And if you ask questions, if you give them the lead, you are not going to be able to discover the true candidate that you want for the school. Remember, this is a four-year position. And once we take it as a council, Every faculty member, every student, every staff member, every parent has to live with it for four years. So one wants to be judicious in what we are asking for, and one wants to have that window of opportunity for us to explore the future candidates in a deeper sense of the world. Anyone else? So I'm wondering, 
if we can add in into the first line as a way of, I mean, kind of the less is more idea. But I do think that that the numbers in the public schools, it, even though we're not going to be data driven and ask that for like, you know, data, but I'm wondering if we should include the word um, genuine passion for educating and retaining high performing students or I, I mean, I'm just wondering if there's some way that we can incorporate Miss Cruz's idea um, and still allow for that creativity that Mr. Asensio is talking about. So where we're not telling the candidate, yes, this is what you have to tell us you can do. Um, does anyone see an opportunity for incorporating that? Can you repeat that one more time, Ms. McCann? Yeah, so I'm wondering if your idea of, um, instead of saying experience with attracting and retaining students as a separate line item, if we want to kind of incorporate the idea of retention and attraction into the first line, a genuine passion for attracting, retaining, and educating high-performing students in a diverse community. Can, I think that works. Can we go, can we go back and see what the uh, the line is? So you're talking about the first point, the yeah. first bullet, genuine passion for educating high performing students and in diverse in a diverse community. And what is it that we want to add? Can you can you word it for me so I can have a better sense of what is? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, what Miss Cruz added was the idea of of attracting and retaining. Uh -huh. So would it be possible to say a genuine passion for attracting, educating, and retaining high performance students in a diverse community? I think that's a good compromise. So yes, yeah, so I think the the best order would be attracting, educating, and retaining. And then by saying it's a passion, we're not we're not saying you're gonna you know that the data is is going to show that you did this at your last school that you know because we know that there's other factors involved. In order for okay. In order for us to attract, we have to explore what we have in the building currently. What does that candidate have that will enable us to create innovative programs to attract those students and to retain those students and to foster those students within our building? Mm -hmm. and, remember, and remember that these comments are, are coming from colleagues of ours who are working within a building to, uh, five days a week, eight, eight hours, sometimes 10, 10 hours a day. Uh, and we all call, know the comes and goings of the school. Um, and I'm sorry to say this, but many, but other members of, of the council maybe do not have a, a, a more comprehensive idea of what goes on within the building. So one has to take that into consideration and account. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those of us who are parents and who are from the community, we also bring the knowledge of what the community is saying about the school. And we also bring the knowledge of what we look for when we place a child in the school. So, and some of these points, I mean, like in my particular case with the, um, with the child that I have at the school, 
I mean, I'm definitely interested in the English as a second language portion and many of the things that are included in this description. So I'm very supportive of the description that that the um, that the PPLC put together. But I do know that in the community that a lot of the talk um, about schools influences, it impacts whether a parent will send a child to a school or will choose a charter school. So I, I think that, I mean, I personally support Ms. Cruz's idea to talk about attracting, educating, and retaining as, a, as, a, as kind of a, a, an entire process. And then again, this is not like Ms. McKen said, that is what we see in the community and what we see between all the different schools, right? Why is student is picking XYZ school or how they're developing faster than ours? But you know what, for time's sake, because it seems that we're not going anywhere with this, um, let's just leave it alone and move on and move on to something else because it seems that we're not compromising here. We're not agreeing to to the idea and it's totally fine um that's something question that i i can ask but if we can showcase somebody that can bring those experience or you know also put what we want it will be great but if not again we we gotta move on because i think we're just stuck here you know going in circles for the same thing and we're not compromising we're not you know accepting with miss mccann which i think was a great idea but that's fine i'm okay well let's move on and let's look at the other uh, bullets Okay, um, I do have a, a question as a point of order, though. In terms of when we, I mean, do we vote on the on the description, the advertisement in its entirety at the end of the meeting? Is that the way that it's usually done? Yes, ma'am. Uh, in order for us, in order for it to be published, it has to be voted, agreed upon uh, the LSC, and then sent to uh, Dr. Lemon so that she can uh, approve it, read it, approve it. Once she approves it, the, the announcement is published for 10 school days. And in, the, in those 10 school days, we expect to receive resumes and curriculum vitae for us to revise. At that point, uh, the, the LSC should call for a, uh, a committee, revi revision committee for the applications. Once the committee revision uh, for applications um, a committee comes comes into an agreement of two final candidates, then the LSC uh, will interview the two final candidates and uh, go into a close uh, meeting uh, for election uh, electing the person that we are going to offer the contract for four years. Okay. So is so at the, at the end of the meeting, we'll be voting on this. And I think we can see if there's any other, because one of our responsibilities is not only to approve this, but it's also to amend it if the LCS Absolutely. wants to uh, amend it. So I, I think we should keep that. Um, I think we should move on. Um, yeah. And then we could do a motion to, um, to vote to edit or to add to it. Absolutely. Um, Okay, and so we have one, instead of voting right now on that, let's just flag um, that there was a suggestion made here. Um, and then at the end, we can, we can um, entertain a motion to, um, to edit or add if we choose. Um, but yeah, thank you. Let's keep moving on. Um, the, the next section has to do with the position overview and the responsibilities. Um, and so I will read those um, in Spanish while you read it in English. Um, vamos a revisar lo que son las responsabilidades y uh, la vista general de la posición. Um, el primer punto es colaborar con los profesores, los maestros en el diseño y la implementación de un currículum académico riguroso eh, en un ambiente equitativo que es consciente eh, de las necesidades sociales y emocionales eh, del adolescente. Eh, el otro punto de comunicar efectivamente con los padres de familia, los estudiantes, la facultad, eh, los líderes eh, políticos del distrito eh, y también con el, 
liderazgo eh, con diferentes colaboradores y otros eh, que tienes interés en, en el colegio. Um, debe debe eh, poder contratar y retener um, profesores eh, y equipo que, um, con, con alto rendimiento y apoyar su crecimiento, eh, su desarrollo. Colaborar con la facultad eh, para estructurar el desarrollo o, o sea, programas de desarrollo profesional que usan efectivamente eh, el tiempo limitado y promueven um, el, la excelencia académica en un ambiente que es inclusivo y apoya el aprendizaje. Um, segundo, el siguiente punto es para crear sistemas um, en, el, en el contexto y las reglas eh, de CPS y de CTU um, para la para poder rendir cuentas, eh, o sea, de, de accountability. Y también um, de poder evaluar el um, desempeño de los profesores y guiar a, a los maestros para lograr sus metas um, de desempeño. También um, debe valorar y incluir lo que son las preocupaciones y la retroalimentación de los estudiantes en una forma equitativa um, para poder entrar en procesos de la toma de decisión, de implementar soluciones con estudiantes como eh, colaboradores activos. Um, también de valorar el modelo de liderazgo distributivo y, um, y la voluntad de apoyar la, su implementación eh, tras toda la escuela, de poder um, aumentar la integri integridad de la cultura de la escuela um, por medio de programas atléticos, de artes, um, de, de equipos académicos y de todas las actividades extracurriculares en un esfuerzo para producir um, la mejor experiencia o, o la mejor calidad de experiencia estu estudiantil. También de, um, de poder llevar a cabo un sistema de justicia restaurativa y también um, una forma de, um, de san sanar a los estudiantes, uh, healing centered approach. Um, eh, en cuanto a, a la política de dis disciplina que está, uh, um, está conforme al código de conducta de los estudiantes. También um, debe poder um, promover y facilitar la diversidad de los estudiantes y la facultad de trabajar con la comunidad y con otras organizaciones Um, para construir um, los recursos y, y encontrar los recursos en, de familia y de comunidad para poder um, mejorar el aprendizaje estudiantil. También debe promover um, un compromiso y participación en, en, en um, diferentes um, actividades extracurriculares que incluyen las artes y los deportes um, al lado de lo académico. Y por último, de activamente um, poder manejar la finanza y el proceso de presupuesto, incluyendo la negociación de un presupuesto óptimo um, por medio de la, por trabajar con la oficina central y con um, la ciudad. Uh, también de poder um, hacer, eh, de poder um, eh, hacer un appeal o, o de poder, si hay una alocación que esté favorable a la escuela, de poder cuestionarlo y llevar el proceso de appeal, apelar, um, y también de maximizar el uso de los fondos limitados para asegurar que lo, las necesidades de los estudiantes um, se logran dentro de lo que sería uh, un currículum uh, robusto 
eh, también eh, programas extracurriculares y los servicios um, en, en su alrededor. So, that is the list of the responsibilities of the program. Um, eso son las responsabilidades. Is there any comment? Anything that would need to be added? Okay. Um, I think I just wanted to comment that I do think that the idea that um, that Ms. Cruz proposed about training and development of talent for staff is contained in the responsibilities um, because it talks about hiring and retaining high performing teachers and support their ongoing development. So I do see that that point um, is is included. So that would be my comment. In addition to that, you have the collaboration of the PPLC, who is the, the organism that is elected by the faculty who will make sure that the person elected to the position follows through with it. Because we make recommendations in terms of training, in terms of uh, professional development, in terms of uh, uh, anything that has to do with the academical development of the programs in our school and uh, um, anything that has to do with the curriculum too. So the PPLC will, will make, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, 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 an elected body that will ensure that the person that uh, is elected principal will have to follow through with it because we make recommendations to the decisions that they make. Okay. They, they don't make they don't make decisions principals can make decisions uh to to to, to implement programs within the school uh, but a good principal would know and recognize that a pplc uh that is selected by the faculty has the right by law to revise those uh programs and to make recommendations to whether we want to have those programs running or not running okay thank you is there any other further comment okay so then let's move into the credentials um so, eso sería um, credenciales que, o requerimientos de la posición. Um, and this would be la capacidad de ser líder y hacer crecer eh, un, un colegio que es a nivel 2. Um, um, también tienen que tener un mínimo de cinco años comprobados de una experiencia exitosa en, en un colegio, en un high school. Um, y también eh, hay una preferencia para experiencia administrativa. Y por último, eh, de poder cumplir con todos eh, los requerimientos del Estado y de la elegibilidad es, según CPS para los eh, principales. Um, para poder servir como un principal en el momento de su selección. Is there any comment on the, the three different position credentials? ¿Hay algún comentario sobre no, credenciales? Nota aclaratoria para aquellos que hablan eh, castellano. En inglés, principal se traduce en español como director de la escuela. Uh -huh. piensen, piensen que es el director de la escuela y no el principal, porque el principal para nosotros en castellano no existe. So, cuando ustedes uh, hablen, cuando ustedes eh, eh, piensen en principal en inglés, 
en español básicamente es el director de la escuela. Ya, yeah, excelente, perfecto, gracias. Any other comment? Okay, so at this point, um, I would entertain a motion um, either to accept, um, to approve the, um, the, the advertisement as is, or we could also, um, someone if they also want to propose that we um, approve with an edit, this um, description, this advertisement. I make a motion that the advertisement for principal, principal uh, vacancy for Foreman College and Career Academy as is established by the document presented to us today on July 13, 2021 is accepted as is written. Yes. So Mr. Asensio has um, moved to um, approve the document as the advertisement as written. Is there a second to that motion? Ms. Woods did. Oh, Ms. Woods, I'm sorry. Ms. Woods did the, uh, the, the second. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear that. So the, um, the motion has been, um, it's been presented and it's been seconded. All in favor, um, say aye or write your name. So it looks like we have four eyes. So I don't think the motion carries. Okay, so Mr. Escamilla has abstained. Yes, you can ask for the, those that approve and those that um, uh, that are nays. Pardon me? You, you can typically ask, ask those who approve and then uh, that decline and then abstain. So abstentions, approvals, and, and people, people that say nay. Okay, so we have, we have three nays, we have one abstention, and we have four approvals for so that uh, 
so if I can, uh, if it's not approved, can I have the floor to speak for a few, for a minute? Uh, yes, you may. So I think the next step then is to um, find out um, from the nay, the people that voted nay, what would um, what would it take to compromise and get the um, advertisement passed? Is it the the edit and the addition? Um, and then if that's if that's what would get the vote passed, then we um, someone uh, proposes or moves to motions to vote um, in favor of the advertisement, including the addition, which I believe um, you made clear earlier um, on behalf of Ruth Cruz, our community rep. And if uh, Mr. Flores um, took down those notes, he can repeat what that original suggestion was so that we can come to a compromise and get the advertisement approved. Yeah, thank you for that. Um that kind of technical guidance on, on how we move forward. Um, so Mr. Flores, did you, so if we move, could you read the, um, the way that the edit uh, would read if we um, then move forward with voting on the same advertisement with an edit? So I wasn't able to get uh, the exact words of how you um, explained it. Um, yeah, so I wasn't able to get down the words of word on that. Okay, I can read um, from my notes that um, the edit is a genuine passion for attracting, comma, educating, comma, and retaining high-performing students in a diverse community. So that would be um, just adding two words in before educating, adding attracting, then educating and retaining high-performing students in a diverse community. So, um, Having read the the previous suggestion for an edit, uh, is there anyone who would like to motion um, that this version of the advertisement be approved? I Israel Flores uh, motion for this uh, to be an amendment for the proposed uh, principal position advertisement. I second that. Okay, so Mr. Flores has made the motion. I'm sorry, I didn't see who seconded it. Ms. Cruz said I motioned that. Okay. I second that. Second second. It. Okay, and it was seconded by Ms. Cruz. All in favor of um, approving the advertisement as written, but including um, one edit um, that was read, um, please say aye or add in the chat box your aye. Aye. Who is the aye? Who, who stated that aye? That was Santa Montoya who's on the phone. Okay. Okay, so Santa Montoya. Okay, so I'm, Mr. You, Flores, can you see the, can you add up the numbers, please, in the chat? So I think Mr. Asensio also has uh, an issue with connecting. He's, um, his connection is going on and off, I noticed. Um, if you want to recap, because I just noticed he joined. 
Yeah, Mr. Asensio, the um, the motion to to um, approve as written, um, the advertisement did not pass. So there was a second motion. There were, um, I believe, the, there were three nays and one abstention, and the rest were ayes. Um, so there was a second motion um, that was approved. I mean, that was seconded too to add in genuine passion for attracting, educating, and retaining high-performance students in a diverse community. And we are taking a vote on that. Since I, since I lost most of the conversation about the nays, saying nays uh, and the reasons why, can I have a recap on that? Yeah, I would just ask if those who um, who who had a, a nay would just state their reason, please. So Israel Flores, I just, uh, like again, going back to what I said, I just want to make sure this point is out there, um, that this is, this is a large issue that's happening in the school. I just want to make sure that it's uh, brought up uh, in some type of form. Um, the way that, that Ms. Ruth brought it up at first, was already edited to not be directly to the question um so i agree with the with the new um edit with the new amendment that's the only reason why i mean they're teenagers i want to know the reasons for the teenagers who voted no and why so i voted nay because i also was um interested in seeing an advertisement that mentioned to me, what's an important point of of attracting and retaining students in public education in the in our local public high school? With all due respect to all those members who voted no, you guys are shooting yourself in your own foot by making an amendment to add something that I consider to be a weapon on our favor within the, the interviewing process, and let me be vehemently clear, within the interviewing process, we have the magnificent opportunity to ask questions to that fact and to discover who the candidate would be. Now, if you want to put it out there, and enable the candidates to have one point on their favor and then listen to what they have to say. And then when they are elected, if they are elected, everything changes. That is your responsibility. Okay, thank you for expressing that opinion. Um, we are involved in the vote right now. So, um, I think we're missing your vote, Mr. Asensio, on on that on what was the second motion. I vote no. Okay, so we would have we have one nay. Has everyone voted that or abstained? Mr. Flores can recap for you. Yes. Um, I'm not exactly sure if uh, everybody has voted, uh, but we have uh, nine votes in. Um, I'm not sure if any people jumped off the call, but we had uh, 11 people as we started. Yeah, so the vote, this vote is the one that began at 614. And to echo the words of uh, Miss Cruz. I think that we are consuming far too much time 
in approving something that should be ready by now, we are shooting ourselves in our own foot by delaying the approval because the next meeting that we will have is on the 31st of August. And by then, we should have an official principle. We have waited far too long for this. Mr. Asensio, Mr. Asensio, this is Ms. Cruz. Um, we, I, again, this is, we all have the right to say yes or no, what we agree. And based on the first motion, only four people um, say yes, and then the rest didn't. And then that's why we went on to the second motion to add the addition. Um, that's what majority people responded. We just want to add two words. And I know you're not pleased with it and I, um, you're not in favor of it, but that's why we have this meeting. So this is um, all of us being in agreement, whether we agree or we disagree. Um, that's why we have the opportunity and we have the right to say what we want, whether you agree or disagree. So I don't think we're delaying anything. We already said that we're going to add um, those two words that it can be uh, seen to review and then we can move forward. But I, that's my opinion again, like I said, and I will state it whether you like it or dislike some of my ideas. Um, I'm not sure if now because we're going to send this to review, it's going to take longer, how much longer it would take. Let's, let's reach out to the people who's going to review it again and approve it. But we're not making drastic changes we're just changing one bullet and adding two words so so by recounting i mean by looking at the count we have seven in favor and we have one against and so the motion um would carry and the advertisement is approved with the um with the edit of the two additional words or three additional words, because it also had an and in it. And I, I would just like to say from my perspective that I think that that's what these meetings are all about, that um, that it's, it's an opportunity for us to appreciate the work that was all done. And we recognize that there was a lot of work done um, and and it's a very well-written advertisement. And that as the local school um, council, we're also taking our role very seriously and also thinking through what each member brings from his or her area of expertise, whether it's as an educator, whether it's as a parent, or whether it's as a community member. So um, from my perspective, as the chair, I think that we've completed our, our mission tonight by approving an advertisement that I think will move forward a process of, of being able to select the best principal um, for a, a school that we all value, Foreman. Unless there's an objection, I would like to move forward to the next point, which is public participation. Um, if I can just have the floor for a minute with your permission, Chairperson McCann. Yes, that's fine. So yes, I, I, I echo your your sentiments. I um, I and I don't speak for other people, but I have seen the the work put forth on this advertisement, and I respect um, uh, Mr. Asensio's passion behind his work. He's been at Foreman for a very long time. He's a very strong safeguard of whom, who comes in through our doors at Foreman, and I value his opinion as well. But I also want to just acknowledge and, and um, um, just appreciate, show appreciation of, of a working local school council that we've all had a hand in, in creating. And uh, because I have seen um, dysfunctional local school councils where we get nowhere. So I do want to appreciate at least the, the, uh, the uh, organization and the respect that everyone's giving each other at least to share opinions and move things forward by voting. So I just wanna share that. Um, and Mr. Garces, who helps us 
post everything on to our website. I just want to ask him if there was any uh, public participation via the Google form um, as of the, the minute we started the meeting. Can you confirm or deny if there was anyone that um, was interested in public participation for today's meeting? Mr. Gar says, are you on the call? I know as of the, the as of the beginning of the meeting, um, I had checked with Mr. Garces and there was no one that had signed up for public participation, but I wouldn't mind giving someone an opportunity if they signed up during the meeting. He's still on the call. We can hold the meeting open um, for another minute in, in case there's um, public participation as desired. I am also going to our Google form to verify if there was any um, additional people that had signed up for today's meeting and I do not see anyone else signed up for today. So there are no, uh, there are no, there's nobody interested in public participation for today's meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the local school council who would like to add anything before we adjourn? Okay, and I would just remind everyone that in the previous meeting, we set a date for um, the end of of um, August um, will be our next our next meeting, and that you will receive an agenda, and you will receive the um, reminder prior um, to that. And I would just wish that everyone have a very safe summer. Um, these last months, um, and thank you very much for your participation on the on on this meeting and everything that you've done to make what was a very difficult school year. Um, and here, I would particularly salute the um, faculty members who are on this meeting for um, carrying foreman through um, one of the most challenging years I think in the history of of public education actually and in the city of Chicago. So we deeply appreciate all of you who are faculty, the principal um, for being able to do that. And we look forward to um, your opportunity too to relax over these next week. And we will reconvene then at the end of August. So with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 6.28 p.m. Um. I think we have to vote for that. Oh, we have to vote. I'm so sorry. Point of order. Can I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn this meeting. Okay. I this was okay. Thank you. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have eight votes. The motion has passed. Nine okay. votes. Thank you. And again, my apologies for <laughs> moving forward without the vote for adjournment. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a great evening. Good evening. Bye-bye.